The aim is to lay down the fundamentals of the teaching which are essential as a foundation for practice. The teaching of the Buddha itself is called the Dhamma. The word Dhamma comes from the root Dara, which means to uphold or sustain. Thus the word Dhamma means literally that which sustains. And the word Dhamma signifies the truth realized by the Buddha. It is the truth which subsists by itself, whether it is understood or not, whether it is taught or not. The true nature of phenomena, the real mode of existence of things. The word Tama also signifies the path that leads to the realization of the truth. And again, it signifies the doctrine which, elucid, which elucidates the truth and which makes known the path. The Buddha does not create the Dhamma. The Buddha discovers the Dhamma through his enlightenment and he makes it known to the world. And his teaching gives a verbal formulation of the true Dhamma, which is itself to be realized by direct experience beyond words and formulas. And because the Buddha's teaching makes known the Dhamma, the self-subsistent Dhamma, the real nature of things and the true path to realization, the teaching also comes to be called the Dhamma. The presentation of the Dhamma that we will give in these lectures to follow is made from the standpoint of the Theravada school of Buddhism, which is the oldest continuous Buddhist lineage that preserves the teaching of the Buddha going back to the historical Buddha himself. Other schools of Buddhist thought would present the Dhamma in other ways, deriving from their own philosophical standpoint. The principal source for our talk is the Tipitaka, the Pali Canon, which consists of three collections of scripture preserved in the ancient Pali language. The three collections are the Vinaya Pitaka, the Sutta Pitaka, and the Abhidhamma Pitaka. The Vinaya Pitaka is the collection of discipline. This gives the rules and regulations for the orders of Buddhist monks and Buddhist nuns. The Sutta Pitaka is the collection of suttas, the sermons and discourses of the Buddha and of some of his great disciples. The third collection, the Abhidhamma Pitaka, is the collection of philosophical treatises which present the Dhamma from the standpoint of a very precise philosophical and psychological analysis. Of these three collections, the one we have relied on mainly for our own presentation is the Sutta Pitaka, the collection of the Buddha's discourses. We've also utilized some of the commentaries would systemize and explain the teaching given in here. Now we can come to the main topic of this first lecture, which is the Buddha himself. In one sutta, the Buddha says that one who sees the Buddha sees the Dhamma. So one avenue of approach to seeing the Dhamma, the truth proclaimed by the Buddha, is by examining the teacher by investigating the one who makes known the truth. The deeper we understand the nature of the Buddha, the deeper we understand the Dhamma, the teaching. And of course, the converse is also true. The deeper we understand the teaching, the Dhamma, the deeper we understand the Buddha. Now, the word Buddha is not a proper name but an honorific title. The word comes from the Pali Sanskrit root Bud, meaning to understand, to know, or to awaken. The word Buddha thus means the one who has understood the truth, the enlightened one, the one who has awakened from the sleep of ignorance and who awakened others from the sleep of ignorance. He is the finder of truth and the proclaimer of truth. The historical person we know as the Buddha 
was an Indian prince of the Shakya people living in northern India. He renounced his right to the throne, became a religious seeker early in his life, and then, after reaching enlightenment, he became a spiritual teacher. His given name was Siddhartha, and his family name Gautama. He was not called the Buddha in his early years, but he acquired this designation only in his 35th year, after he attained supreme enlightenment. However, when we say that the word Buddha is a title, this can be misleading. The word is actually not simply a title given to one particular individual, but it is a designation for a kind of, indi of individual. It represents not a single unique person, but a type of person. According to Buddhist tradition, only one Buddha only one fully, perfectly enlightened one can appear in any historical period. But throughout the cycles of world evolution, cosmic evolution, there have been many Buddhas appearing one at a time, separated by vast intervals. Siddhartha Gautama is only the most recent Buddha, the one known to history. But all those persons who possess the requisite qualities, the completely enlightened world teachers, all of these gain the designation Buddha.